For every beloved Call of Duty map, there is one hated by almost everyone. Kicking things off with arguably the worst map in recent times, a map so bad that it was nuked from the game. That map is Santa Sena Border Crossing from Modern Warfare 2, with Infinity Ward announcing Ground War, a 10v10 mode with larger maps, the focus on 6v6 maps diminished. This led to some Ground War maps being awkwardly slimmed down to make up the numbers. Hoping nobody would notice, instead we got to experience one of the most hated maps of all time. <laughs> This map, this map might be the worst map I've ever played in my life. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> I think I'm understanding why this may not be the best map ever. Border crossing makes history for being the very first one lane map. It's as if they just sneezed while drawing the play boundary and just sent it. It's questionable one lane's layout funnels players into pure chaos. As a result, the map got rather congested and getting shot in the back was very common. This map is so f***ing tragic. I, I... We got this though. I'm gonna play a little bit slow. Ah! Like what the f***? What was that? Not many maps play worse than this and it's becoming a meme at this point. That's how bad it is. <laughs> If that wasn't frustrating enough, every single vehicle was prone to explosion, leading to even more complaints. All these cars should already be blown up, man. It's so annoying. Recognizing the map's flaws, Infinity Ward saw no other option but to make some tweaks to it. Santa Sena was discreetly removed from play in Season 2, as all vehicles were altered to prevent explosions. However, these changes weren't enough to redeem its reputation, and you had Reddit posts like this one warning players of its return. Border Crossing fails to resonate then with COD players, but there was one map so beloved that it's returned not once, but twice. That map is Raid, first playable in Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Set in a hillside mansion in Hollywood, Raid epitomized a traditional three lanes map layout. What's the best Call of Duty map? Best Call of Duty map period, Raid, Black Ops 2, no better map at all. What's the best Call of Duty map? Black Ops 2 Raid. Despite its apparent simplicity, the map quickly became a fan favorite due to its clear sightlines and balanced encounters. Raid is just a little bit better and arguably the best three lane map ever made. It was fast paced without being chaotic, which is a fine balance that the developers have to make. Raid was eventually remade as a paid DLC in Black Ops 3 with a map named Empire. But in Black Ops Car War, Raid officially made its return as a base map to the delight of many. Once again, it was chosen as an esports map for the competitive Call of Duty League. Despite being eight years old, Raid, very much so, stood the test of time. Many fans also have noted how seamlessly it integrates into newer game modes such as Control, while also adapting well to new movement mechanics. Um, I think Raid is just a classic, man. They brought it back to so many different uh, games just because it plays out so well. Raid is probably the first map that comes to mind when discussing Cold War maps. But as for Modern Warfare 19 maps, the first one you may well think of is Piccadilly. However, unlike Raid, Piccadilly is memorable for less favorable reasons. This has got to be not only the worst map in COD history, but it's got to be the worst map in gaming history like in any fps game is there a worse multiplayer map than piccadilly look at all these buses bro what's that one map piccolo like that's probably the worst map in cod history that will make you not like the game call of duty has a lengthy history of designing maps around real life locations like underground and resistance in modern warfare 3 or crown raceway in modern warfare 2. however piccadilly took realism to a different level Fans began to make side-by-side -side comparison videos showing just how realistic the map was compared to the real-life version at Piccadilly Circus in London. This realism stems directly from one of the campaign missions, suggesting a deliberate choice by Infinity Ward to make the most of it. So Infinity Ward decided to let us play Piccadilly in multiplayer, without making any modifications except adding a few buses to alter the flow. And it's safe to say, this map did not go down too well. The campaign Piccadilly map is great. I don't know if you guys have played it yet, but it's amazing. But dude, the multiplayer Piccadilly, forget about it. You try and do your best to get out of the area, to, to try and move somewhere, but someone's always around the next corner or someone's always waiting for you to try and run that way. I don't want to play on Piccadilly. Piccadilly is borderline unplayable. 
No, I'm outside the combat area here. I'm going to... Ah, fuck it. I, there's, there's no worse way to blow the veto. I did not mean that. Piccadilly, let's get silly. Ah, uh, probably F tier. What's even crazier is somehow Piccadilly made it into the competitive map pool for Search and Destroy. Ultimately, Piccadilly taught us one thing. Turning a real-life location into a functional multiplayer map isn't the best of ideas. Piccadilly might not have been the greatest map space in London, but in World War II, there was one which became an instant classic. That map, London Docks, a three-lanes map based near the Tower Bridge in London. World War II wasn't exactly the most beloved when it came to their map pool, but the simplicity of London Docks made it stand out amongst the chaos. London Docks to me is a perfect example of a great Call of Duty map. It's an excellent size, it's not too big, it's not too small, you can always find an engagement if you need it. Just like Raid, Docks' three-lane design was key to its acclaim, catering for various playstyles. At the dock size, ARs could have long-range battles, while also providing an alternate route to SMGs to flank around. But at the mid-map statue, SMGs would thrive in the short-range environment. London Docks, World War II. I love that map just because it was just a head smash, you know, it was a lot of gunfights. It's kind of where I, where I like to be, so I'd say London Docks. All in all, London Docks was one of the only good things about World War II, and there was potential for it to make a return in Vanguard, according to leakers. Unfortunately, that never came to fruition. How is that map never recreated? It was arguably, in my opinion, the best map of that game, and I would love to see it in another COD. But it's safe to say the majority of players would welcome this map back if it were ever reintroduced. And it was also played in all three competitive modes during the World War II title, Hardpoint, Search and Destroy, and Capture the Flag. If London Docks is classified as simple, then Chasm from Ghost is known for being the complete opposite. After three successful games in the Modern Warfare series, Infinity Ward decided it was time to freshen things up and released Ghosts in late 2013. Amidst these changes, the map pool particularly stood out, and not always for the right reasons. Enter Chasm, a map based around a bombed out building in Los Angeles. Chasm was one of the first maps in COD to truly introduce verticality, but this shift in design philosophy was not exactly well received. And this map is not the best. It's kind of like a Battlefield map. This map actually reminds me of one of the maps from Battlefield Bad Company 2. I mean, look at this map. What? I mean, dude. Come on, man. You know there were some heavy drugs going on when they were making this map. Because the sheer size of the map made it a rather negative experience, and it seems as though it was made for 20 players at least, rather than just 12. I'm just running around. Look, I mean, where's the flow? There's no flow in this map. I mean, this dude just comes out of nowhere. I mean, look, I didn't even know there was a staircase there. I mean, come on, man. Given its complex layout, moving far away from the three lane map designs we had seen previously, and the issues it therefore presented, it's no surprise that Kazakh was not chosen for esports play. And while it may not have been the worst map in the game, it was certainly not loved by many. I don't know who the map designer was for Ghost, but you need to get fired. One map that was loved though is Solar from Advanced Warfare. As the first ever jetpack Call of Duty, designing maps around the brand new movement was understandably going to be tough. But Sledgehammer Games rose to the occasion, producing one of the better map sets in COD history. I love this map for this reason. You don't have to walk on the ground at all. You could literally just jump from rooftop to rooftop as a sniper. That's one of the big reasons why I love this map. Solar in particular stood out as one of the most entertaining maps to play on and to watch. This map is visually appealing. Probably one of the prettiest maps in the game. It's a map that you cannot go wrong with because you could have uh, either close range gunfights or either long range gunfights on this map. So A three lanes map on paper, Solar exemplified exactly how to implement verticality into a three lane map. For Hardpoint in particular, there was a variety of different battles around the map. P1 was dominated by long-range engagements, while the indoor hills at P3 and P4 allowed SMGs to flourish. Although Solo garnered widespread acclaim, Al Bagra Fortress was not met with the same fondness. Similar to border crossing in some ways, Fortress was not designed with 6v6 in mind, but rather a location in the Warzone 2 Battle Royale map. This is, this is the worst map in the game. Worst map in the game. With this, Fortress became one of the more disliked maps in the game, particularly by professional players. Oh God, I'm not trolling. This is Control on Albagra Fortress as a solo queue. This might be the worst experience I've ever had in Call of Duty. 
in control, players were bewildered at how it was even possible to win as the attacking team. Winning an Albagra Fortress offense is like the hardest thing to do in the Call of Duty League. Whatever we can do to get Fortress control out, we must do. Yes, let's play this. It can't be worse. I mean, I say it every watch party we do. Every every team we watch, I'm like, this map sucks. Get rid of Fortress control. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get, get no it. more Albagra Fortress. <laughs> It even got to a point where the Los Angeles Grillers refused to try in order to preserve their lives. This gave them the tiebreaker advantage, forcing their opponent Surge to play the final round on offense instead. Fortress had its fair share of haters, but one map which won't have many is Standoff. Just like Raid, Standoff was a staple in Black Ops 2, allowing for a wide variety of playstyles. Honestly, it's the, the perfect map. I can't think of a single thing wrong with Standoff, other than seeing the kebabs on it makes me hungry sometimes. Whether it was the long-range battles mid-map, or the flanks down the back alley, Standoff allowed everyone to eat. Standoff is obviously S-tier. It's one of the Call of Duty goaded maps. Anything works here on Standoff, which is great for a map. If you have a map where you can use any weapon, and it's great for all play styles, and that's a great thing. In esports in particular, Standoff has been the stage for numerous iconic moments from over the years, like the Optic Van. It returned in Black Ops 3 as a map called Outlaw, as did Raid with Empire, and its eventual return in Cold War was met with jubilation, particularly among the competitive fans. At the Stage 5 Major in 2021, many remember classic of the Seattle Surge going off to defeat FaZe in one of the biggest upsets in CDL history. Standoff is without doubt an S-tier map, but Gustav Cannon occupies the other end of the spectrum. And I ain't playing no stupid Gustav Cannon. I'll eat my hat before I play Gustav Cannon. Did you guys really vote for Gustav or was this election rigged, man? You know, Call of Duty would be so great. Who shot me? Oh my God, I hate this map. This map was essentially a battle to control the Gustav Railway Gunner. Not only did it have the height advantage, but there was ample cover, which made it practically a fortress. Really, all you gotta do is aim down sights on top of the Gustav and bam, it's easy V2 rocketing. The first F of, of the list, we got Gustav. Get it the f out of here. If you don't like that map with me, then you probably know what I'm going to say. It's, just, it's not a very good map, dude. To make matters worse, the map's vast openness provides little to no cover, putting anyone not on the gun at a constant disadvantage. But it's only fitting to end on the highest note, with a map that has captured the hearts of players more than any other. That map is Nuketown. If you want to look at a map that's like the most definitive and called it's it's Nuketown, dude. I they will never make a map as good as Nuketown, man, as far as close quarters, never. I'm putting Nuketown in its own category because I feel like I have to. Nuketown is Nuketown. Simple, fun, and chaotic. First featuring in Black Ops 1, Nuketown has been remade in every single Treyarch Call of Duty that followed. Despite its basic map design, Nuketown offers an experience that seems never to tire and frequently has its very own 24-7 playlist. Nuketown's blend of nostalgia, simplicity, and sheer fun secures its place as the most beloved map in Call of Duty history. And there you have it, some of the most loved and hated maps in COD history. Let us know what we missed so we can include them for part two.